After nearly a year with the Fujifilm XF 35mm 1.4R, I can definitively say that it is my favorite Fujifilm lens so far. Maybe my favorite lens ever. And what can I say that hasn't been said on YouTube already? It's the lens with character. It's the lens with some flaws, but they're good. There's something about this lens that I love using. I agree with all those statements. Everybody who's made those statements is speaking from the heart, and that is because that's where this lens hits you. I like that Voigtlander 23mm 1.2 manual focus lens. It's really fun to use. But when I just want to go out and I just want to take photos and I just want to experience something similar to the X100V that I had, this is my package. This is my X100V with a 35 millimeter lens. I don't have a technical enough background and so I think the best way to talk about this lens and a year with this lens with well over 2,000 photos with it, why I find it special. So I'm going to share some of my photos and please remember that photography is subjective but what I'm trying trying to show, what I hope to show in here, is why I find the images that this lens creates to be special. Let's get into that. All right, this first image is actually one of the very first images I took with this lens. And when I took this photo, when I was looking through my viewfinder and when I was looking at it on the LCD panel afterward, I just, I knew I had what I wanted. And let me show you why. It's a pretty simple image. There's no people in it, but there is really harsh light coming. It's not blown out. As you can see on the, uh, the areas where the sunset is coming through the openings in the building, that light is very diffused and that's just the natural state of this lens. So that's one of the areas that I really like this lens. The other is on an image with so many hard edges, all the edges are kind of soft. And I think other lenses would really over sharpen these areas. It feels more like a natural photo that my eyes see. And then I can come back and I knew when I saw this image how I would color grade it and I, that's what I did. I, I just really contrasted the image. Just because I like the light to be muted doesn't mean I want color to be muted. So I, I definitely wanted to pull some color out of There was this really pretty uh, like sandstone marble stuff in the building. So I wanted to make sure I captured that. I knew I had it just from this image, just looking through the LCD that I had what I wanted. It is in this image that I really see what it is I was looking for. All right, this next image that I want to share. I've actually never shared this image online anywhere. This wasn't a banger. <laughs> um, I, I hold on to it because while it's not really that interesting of an image, there's not a lot going on here. At this moment, it was really early in the day. You can see the sun hitting the building up here, but that's actually why I wanted to point this out for this video, is the sun hitting up here. Even though the sun is super bright, it's bouncing off this glass and you can tell that it's completely blown out in this corner here. Even though it's doing all that, even though the light is that harsh, the lens still sort of diffuses it down and the light that comes out of it is very soft and easy to look at. Like even this flaring that's happening over here on the right almost looks like the light is hitting the building. And then the light that is actually reflecting onto the street itself is very subtle and soft. The edges of the brick in the building are still noticeable. So I, I look at this image as a perfect description of why I like this lens so much. Okay, moving on. This one is really fun because I was going out to see the, uh, the light show at the Botanical Gardens and it was really cold that night and I thought about bringing the 16 to 55 2.8 but I opted instead for the small package and the smaller form factor of the 35 millimeter 1.4. I was actually kind of nervous about it because I didn't have IBIS but the image turned out great. And one of the things I wanna point out here is I was at F1.4 that you can see, I'll open up the panel here on the right. You can see that I'm at f1.4. I, I centered the focus in the middle and what I really like to show in this image is how the bokeh is happening across the sea of lights going into the lights at the back here. They really blend in well. They're really round and pure. I just, I really like the bokeh in this image and I, I really like the way this image turned out. This next image I really like to share because it's just me and my dog on my couch in my living room. There is a single incandescent bulb going on up here in the corner and that is my single source of light in this whole scene. 
So my dog is a black lab and what I really love about this is the softness of how the shadows are falling off the edges of the side of his face. So everything in the light in here is really soft. Nothing is hard but it tells the story of his face really well. It's such a great example of why I love this lens. But yeah, this is one of those images where you're just playing around with your camera on your couch, you take a photo and you realize, oh, that's that's actually quite lovely. And I get that a lot with this lens. That's, that's another thing that I should point out here is I get a lot of, oh, that's really nice. And that's just something that you, you love about a great lens. Okay, so I'll just kind of move through some of these images now and hopefully you can see now as I share these images how the light is very soft. Like this particular image is a great example of why a lens that is less than pure works really well because the scene in this coffee shop, these two women talking, the way the light is reflecting off the table, all of this just lends itself to a softer look and feel. You know, I'll just kind of flip through the end of here. These images just really capture what it is that I find so special about this lens. I think it's the best lens that Fuji has and it would be a shame if they let go of this form factor. Actually, speaking of that, you know, one of the reasons that I don't particularly like the 18 millimeter 1.4 that I recently got and sold uh, or the 33 or the 23 is they're just too bulky. I really want a lens this big or about this big for this camera system. And if I'm thinking of, you know, my other Fuji photographers out there with an the XE4 or X-T3 or the smaller cameras, I just would love it if Fuji would stick to this design language, you know, the, the design language that kind of got them here, right? This was designed in concert, I believe, with the original X-Pro. So that's why it looks so at home on my X-Pro3 because they, they belong together. It seems like Fuji has sort of forgotten that and they're, you know, going after a, a different market that I don't think they need to. I think they have such a great niche right now that they might want to stay there, but what do I know? And remember, if you're, if you're liking this review, if you're liking some of these photos, don't forget to like and uh, subscribe to my channel because it does give me a little incentive to keep on moving forward. I've got some more content that's coming and I'd love to share it with you. All right, to talk about a few negatives, and there are some, one is after using the Voigtlander 23mm 1.2 manual lens, I realize how horrible this system is for manual focus. Not only is it bad on the body itself, where like if you're if you want to do zone focusing, you have to do this stuff digitally. I mean, I can get there. But what I really don't like is when I'm trying to pull focus with this ring, it feels like I'm pulling it in mud. It just it's so slow compared to the Voigtlander. It's almost frustrating. I can use it for manual, but honestly, I, I just prefer using center focus. It does have moving parts, so this, this part of the lens right here will move up and down as you gain focus. It's got some noise to it. If you had a mic on here and you were trying to do like a talking head video and they were moving a lot and the focus was moving, then you would probably hear that. But the bigger problem with the moving parts is not the video. It's, it's not weather sealed. If you're out in the rain and this, you're trying to gain focus and those moving parts are moving, you're gonna get water in your lens. So you do have to be careful with it. I take it out in the rain because I have a camera and I <laughs> like to take photos. I haven't had an issue yet, but it is not weather sealed. Anyway, that is my review of the XF 35mm 1.4R. It is my favorite lens. I use it all the time. I can't recommend it highly enough. I mean, if you like the kind of photography you saw, then this is probably the lens for you. Don't overthink it. But that is my review, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you. Whatever it is, the je ne sais quoi.